So we tell our clients to remain invested, uh, but to uh, keep a little bit of powder dry. Uh, what you, you mentioned this morning, there's a lot of hesitation. Investors are looking at the sharpest contraction in GDP, the order of 25 to 30%, and trying to comprehend how that fits in with the biggest stimulus we've seen since the Second World War, saying that uh, between the end of March and the end of May, the balance sheet of G4 uh, countries or central banks uh, has increased from $5 trillion to $20 trillion, a huge, huge stimulus. Investors are also looking at the short-term economic data, which shows a very strong bounce, and trying to extrapolate that into what might happen in, in six months' time. And it's a very difficult calculation. It's not something that investors are, are used to doing. So we've had this uh, rally, mostly fueled by liquidity, um, and a lot of good news is discounted in prices. And unless we see the economy really catch up with markets, we think we might be range bound and we'll definitely see more volatility. We looked at the, the number that the banks have taken from the ECB yesterday and it looked enormous and it, it raised all sorts of questions about why they are taking this money at negative rates. And yet, as I look at your notes here, you are increasingly positive on the European equity story. Why is that? We are indeed increasingly positive. Uh, we seem to uh, have seen a, a change. Investors have been w very worried about two things over the last few years. One uh, was that there was no, um, no steps taken in terms of fiscal cons consolidation, uh, of, of fiscal integration for the region. And the other uh, problem that people saw was that Germany was just not spending. And we've seen with the proposal, the EU joint rescue proposal, we have seen this first step towards uh, fiscal integration. It's only a proposal. A lot of detail needs to be ironed out. But we see it very much as a step in the right direction. It has the support of the three main leaders uh, in Europe. Uh, so Macron, Merkel and uh, Mrs. van der Leyen. Uh, and uh, we do expect the proposal to go through, perhaps in some watered down version, but to go through nevertheless. And then for Germany, we've seen a huge U-turn from being a very parsimonious country to being a big spender. But 10 days ago, uh, the Chancellor Angela Merkel has announced uh, a, a fiscal spending program of the order of 4% of GDP. That's in addition to what was announced early in the crisis. So spending of 9% of GDP in addition to uh, a lot of loan guarantees. So they really are opening their purse strings. Uh, and clearly, um, Mrs. Merkel seems to want to, to have a legacy. Uh, she is a very popular leader and she's using her influence uh, to try and, and push that through. So these are changes which um, are still ongoing. Many were unexpected and certainly better than what people had hoped for. So we think it's worth looking at Europe again. Frederick, the coordinated response we've seen from Europe has been positive for bringing down some of those yields around sovereigns, but also if you look at high yield, and here in Europe there's been a question mark around what to do with the fallen angels at this point. And if you think about the characteristics of fallen angels, typically they have a little bit more discipline. They don't want to be in that category of junk bonds forever. What do you make of the spreads we're witnessing, some of the appetite, I think it was 11 straight weeks of moves back into the high yield space. Do you think there's still interest for investors? to go back into high yield here in Europe? So we think that uh, fixed income uh, will um, give uh, the, the best um, risk adjusted returns. We do prefer a high yield uh, in, in the US. So back in um, March, yields, high yields were uh, trading as much as 10% over uh, treasuries. We're now down to 6%, so uh, spreads have come in, uh, but that's still above the five-year average of about 5%. Uh, so we think there's still uh, some uh, upside potential. It is uh, an asset class which is directly supported by central banks. Uh, and yes, there is the risk of default, but we think that investors are compensated for that. Think that since uh, the end of March, the number of companies whose issues were trading at distressed levels has halved. Uh, so, and, and that's because companies have been able to tap uh, the markets for their liquidity needs.
So we think that high yield is definitely worth looking at, probably more in the US than in Europe.